Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, and this is part two of a four-part video all about making a drawbar and a hand wheel for a 5C collet attachment for this little hardened speed lathe. Now, in part one, I made the tube and the internal thread, and now I am ready to start on the hand wheel. So this is uh, video number 746, part two. And it's entitled Casting the Hand Wheel for the Drawbar. So I'm starting out with this two piece split pattern that Ted Sakura made for me, and also a core box. These are core prints, and this is what the hand wheel is going to look like, and it will be pressed on to the tube. So let's go over to the bench and uh, take a look at this and talk about it. But before I do, this video, part two, is extra credit. There are a lot of people that do not like to watch the casting and molding and all of that stuff. So if you are one of those, just meet me in part three when it is available for the machining of this. And then finally in part four for fitting it up and installing it and testing it and all of that. So let's take a look at this pattern. So I decided that I wanted a 5 inch diameter hand wheel and again I play around with paper and cardboard and all of that to, to get the sizes that I want and I'm basing the design from the Sheldon 11 inch because I had Sheldon lays at school and I liked their draw bar and there is a picture of it and there's the hand wheel remember I've already made the tube here are some of the other parts we'll talk about later. Notice there's a spanner wrench there too. But this hand wheel had four holes in it for the spanner. And I just like the general shape of it. So I made up a wooden mock-up. This is not a pattern. This, there's no draft on this. It's just a mock-up for me to get a feeling for the size. And so that I could communicate with my Betty. Ted Sikora, and I'll put a picture of him in there. You, I've talked about him a lot. He's helped me with patterns, and uh, he's from Wisconsin. And just, just a great guy, a retired dentist, and extremely talented, a lot smarter than I am. So I make a video, and I, I talk to him and tell him what I want. And then, after about two weeks, here comes a package, and there is the split pattern. And isn't that a beauty? Notice that there are alignment pins that are printed in there, so they're extremely accurate for good register. Also, there's some threaded holes here that will be used with these little screws to draw it out. So you can print threads. You can do a lot of really neat things. I think most of you know with a real thick cross section like this, in making a casting you're going to end up with a lot of shrinkage and uh, in order to <clears throat> counteract that I'm going to use a core and I'll make the core with a core box and the purpose of a core is twofold really one it eliminates the thick spots and then number two it allows me to cast the hole not the finished size but a large hole a one inch diameter hole all the way through there to speed up the machining process when I get that far. Ted did make a casting of this so you can see some parting sand on there but look at the nice fillets. And I told him, uh, Ted, I'm not sure if I want a core box because sometimes I don't want to mess with cores and all of that business just for making one casting. So he said, well let me try this. So he made the core prints as separate screw in pieces that I can use or not use and if I did not want to use the core prints there are plugs and they are also threaded and even a holes for a tiny little spanner wrench so if I wanted to I could cast this without the core prints as I just said and then I would put a very large riser right here which takes care of shrinkage to a certain extent but I do intend to use the core and the and the core print so I'll put that back in place so here's the core that Ted made and sent to me in the mail <clears throat> notice that it's tapered on the ends because 
This is a vertical core, and I'm not sure I ever showed how to make and use a vertical core, but there needs to be some way to kind of make it firm in the, uh, in the mold <clears throat> when I set the core so this doesn't fall over or misalign where I damage the mold when I assemble the cope to the drag. But that's what it looks like, and it, I believe it's four inches long. Here is the core box, just the way he sent it to me. It is two pieces, and he had better results on the ones he made by lining it with tin foil. You might call it aluminum foil. And he's got it all set up for me, so I'm not going to take it apart to show it to you at this time. But there are alignment pins, and of course there's the... Uh, the split there where you see the aluminum on each side. And I think the rubber bands probably work better than uh, trying to put a clamp on there. You can imagine that a core box like this would be kind of difficult to make. Take a lot of time. So I'm so glad that he printed it for me. And he does the printing and sends it to me because <coughs> I'm like you. I don't like the print. I don't like my printer. Matter of fact, I hate it. So, thank you very much, Ted, for what you're doing. Let's get to the business now of core making. He said he used some rather coarse sand. I'm going to try it with some real fine sand, and I'm going to use <coughs> some uh, water glass, which I'll show you right now. Okay, here's the water glass. I just ordered that. I think I got it from Amazon. I forgot. It might have been eBay. Doesn't matter. It's about 20 bucks with shipping for a, well, it's only a pint. Super silicate, foundry grades, sodium silicate, and of course it, it's uh, water glass is the layman's term. They, they took care so it wouldn't spill in shipping. I thank them for that. Warning label on it and some directions. So I'm going to mix it up in a plastic bag, ram it into the core box, and then gas it with a CO2 fire extinguisher. Let's get started, finally. Oh, I forgot to mention the spanner wrench that he made for me. Notice that it even says hardinge. We got a nice fit there. What I was originally going to use, I didn't know that he was going to make a spanner for me, but I was going to use one of these spanners that I've got. And, uh, and drill the holes. And that would work fine too, but since he made this for me, this is what I will use. It's a, a single-sided pattern. So it will need some work in here probably with a drum sander. All right, back to core making. Okay, I'm ready to make a sodium silicate core. This is extremely fine silica sand, finer than what I need. And it's locally grown here in the Illinois Valley. So let me determine the amount that I need and always a little extra. There we go. Now I'm using the fair amount method. These instructions were so vague and then it even said uh, use experimentation. Well I guess that's what I'm doing. So I don't know how much to put in, but I am going to put it in a plastic sandwich bag. I saw several people, including Clark, down at Woodney Hill Foundry, and this is how he does it. So I'm going to put the sand in the baggie and then pour, where is it? I got about an ounce of water glass right there. You probably can't tell. It's clear and absolutely odorless. Okay, there's the sand. and the water glass and I'm just going to knead it like I'm making a loaf of bread or something like that. I'll do that off camera. The whole idea here is to get virtually every grain of sand coated with some of the sodium silicate. Okay, it's all ready. I might have added too much. I don't know. We're going to see if it works. It feels very wet.
Ted very carefully planned this so that the core box would fit in the cone of this fire extinguisher. Now I'm just going to gas it a little bit and see what happens. And I'm also going to gas it in this big baggie here. I don't know if it's necessary, but what the heck, doesn't cost much. And you can use your wife's bread box or just about any container. If you're using a metal core box, you can just bake the whole thing at 350. Forget the CO2. Okay, let's see if I can get it out of there. You know, when I stuck that wire in there earlier, the vent wire, it's just as crook as a dog's hind leg, isn't it? Boy, he wasn't kidding when he said that it would release real well using the tin foil. So, that's really just perfect, isn't it? And it's quite hard. I don't think it needs reinforcement. Alright, I'm ready to start molding here. I'm using a 10 by 12 flask with a 3 inch cope and drag. Use a little parting sand here. And I'm ready to do a little sifting. And this will all be sped up. And now to set the core and try to get it in there perfectly plumb or straight or vertical. And now to assemble. It's been one hour. Let's see what it looks like. It's still pretty hot, of course. Okay, I'll start by breaking off the core. Boy, that was hard. Now I'm going to drill that out with an old quarter inch drill bit and the DeWalt. The CO2 cores are great but they are not all that collapsible so I will work that out off camera. Okay there it is with a one inch hole in it. I'll take it and saw off the gate there and it is ready to go and I'm going to make another one off camera I will not show that maybe two more off camera and I will show you a short video of me making the spanner wrench okay now I'm molding the spanner wrench 
Needless to say, I'm not going to show all of that. Okay, it's been about one hour. Let's see what this spanner looks like. I think it's okay. Okay, we've got some successful castings. There's the spanner. I still have to cut off the gates, of course. And here is the hand wheel. Turned out real well. Notice the hole now. It's a one inch hole, but I need one and three eighths in the end. So I'll bore that out. A long time ago I talked about core drill. C-O-R-E. This is a four flute core drill. They also make them in three flute. This is a 5 eighths and is not suitable. I'm just talking about them. But if in fact I had a 1 and 3 eighths core drill, I would go right in with it. The purpose of a core drill is to enlarge a cord hole and the multiple flutes help make the drill bit more rigid and it keeps it from drifting around in the hole. But I want the hole to be perfectly concentric so of course in the next chapter I will be boring this out with a boring bar to one and three eighths. I did have a failure. This was made with a core that was too wet. So I've been baking the cores to make sure there's no moisture in them but that's what happens when steam forms inside of a mold. There was no explosion or any indication of this on the exterior of the sand mold. It was all internal and not even noticeable until I knocked the core out and examined it carefully and realized it was totally full of voids and scrap. So I cut it in half to show you what not to do. Keep your powder dry and make sure you're cores are dry. Well this concludes part two of the four part series. Be sure and tune in for chapter three when available when I do the machining of the hand wheel, the boring and all the other operations that are necessary. And then part four will kind of sum it up. So hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.